Hello everybody, this is the Centralized Dave with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David. And we are back for another podcast. We have chosen this timing. It's um, at the end of November 2022. And today we're going to talk a great deal about Bitcoin and about sentiment mainly. Um, so Curtis, you usually start. So give us a brief uh, introduction to what, what's new with Bitcoin. Yeah, so we're just holding the 16,500. Um, everyone, I think, is still waiting to see about the contagion from FTX blowing up. And then the latest is Genesis, which is the lending part of Gemini, or they're affiliated with Gemini, which is the Winklevoss twins. Um, they're looking at whether uh, Genesis has hired a what you would call restructuring consultancy. So restructuring could be anything from the worst case would be bankruptcy, but it doesn't have to be bankruptcy. It could be um, asset uh, reconfiguration or bringing in new investors or uh, rearranging the share equity uh, with with investors. But it's let's just say it's not a good thing. <laughs> um, and so I think the market is is waiting for the next shoe to drop, right? Um, and it could be Genesis. It could be Coinbase, it could be GBTC. Um, That's what they, I think, by the way. That's the greatest yeah. risk here. We don't know. It's exactly like Lehman Shock was in 2008, where nobody knew who had what debt, uh, who owned the the poisonous uh, mortgage derivatives. Nobody knew. And so it was it basically freezes markets. I guess your listeners, they want to, you know, everyone wants to know where the bottom is so they can buy. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of debate about like how long until we hit the bottom or did we already hit the bottom or um, this chart is just going off of a historical fact that the three times we've gone into bear markets. Uh, so it would have been around 2015, 2018, and then now you had the bottom be 12 to 18 months from the top okay i think in 2014 it was 14 months until we from top to bottom and then in 2018 it was 12 months from top to bottom so in 2018 we went from 175 down to 3500 that took 12 months the 2014 i'm not as familiar with but apparently it was about 14 months so I've heard 12 to 18 months is the estimated range. Um, I would guess it's going to be sooner rather than later because we've got so much bad news. Um, but what are your thoughts on this? I generally think that we are in the second cycle. I am not a fan of the uh, cycles um, that every influencer talks about. Cycles meaning the booms and busts of previous decade. I am rather convinced that we are in a second cycle of crypto for those of you who have been watching the podcast a little bit so i've been able to uh, accurately uh, well read wedges twice uh, this year so first time i was talking about ascending wedge and breakdown in the spring and it then it then happened uh, I didn't think it was going to go straight to 20k. I thought it was going to go just to 30k and stay there for a bit longer, but it still broke down. Then I was talking I was talking about yet another ascending wedge during the summer. And even though yeah, this one here, and even though I capitulated waiting, I capitulated on waiting for a breakdown at the second yeah. half of October, it still did break down. And at the moment, I have been seeing the very opposite. And this is the beauty here, actually. And I've been looking at this like every week now. And I've been thinking like, am I not seeing something? Because it's it's a little bit too good to be true, to be honest. Because I have seen beautiful descending wedge, actually. And the descending wedge is on weekly. And it's um, it can still keep forming for a bit. Because the weekly wedges can be very long. Like, let's... let's uh, Let's just have a, a brief look at the wedges of 2018 and 19. So there was one beautiful descending wedge in 2019, even though it got broken here, like fake broken, and then Corona broke it down. Um, so there was a little bit anomaly here, 
So again, maybe Corona was uh, interfering into the um, into the uh, uh, into the uh, patterns, into all the technicals. Right. The Black Swan event can do that, but and then it got broken upwards. But it took like a year or so. The wedges work only because of the bot programming and only because ninety. 9%, I dare to say, of the trading is done by the bots today, not by human beings. And this is also something different from the previous decade. Also why I am so convinced that the, the, the cycles are not cycles like everybody tells you. But, okay. Can you, if I, you don't mind, can you try to uh, just connect this to the chart I had? Uh, at least some sort of constructive uh, view of, of the future. Not predicting price, but... Yeah, um, so I would not uh, dare to predict bottom because I don't know what's going to be happening like in the second half of the next year. It's too far. Uh, it's too far ahead. But at this stage, as we are in, I think that we are preparing the position for literally breaking upwards of this wedge. Breaking and up. Breaking okay. up means actually that 26 to 28K Bitcoin actually. Uh, it could be just a week, but rather 28k to be completely fair. If we, even if we go lower, then I would expect that there's going to be some kind of a surprising upwards move uh, in the upcoming six months. So that's my point here. And whether, so whether this is the bottom or whether during this upcoming six months, the bottom happens, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what's going to happen after that to be completely fair with you. Okay. So I don't want to talk about the total bottom for I don't know how many years, but uh, I feel confident to talk about uh, a surprising, um, surprising upwards move that is going to happen. In my opinion, if I read if I read this correctly, it's going to happen roughly within six months' time. But it really still can take months still. And also, right. I would like to tell you that people are shorting. The short right. leverage, however, is not coming to market that much yet. So that's also important that maybe the bottom will be formed only when we see short leverage coming. OK, it's not happening at the moment that much. Right. It's also it's also not happening because we had, if you remember, uh, on 10th of November, we we went back to 18,000. So all the short leverage that came in the prior day got wiped. So it's like at the moment people stay away from leverage, from either leverage at the moment. But right. also when you see Bit BTC shorts on Bitfinex, also you can see that people are shorting, shorts are being opened just like right. it was the previous summer, summer 2021, if you remember. Everybody was kind of expecting lower prices in the summer right? and people were right. shorting. Okay. And also funding fees, if you check, they're just uh, every day kind of negative. So there is lots of good stuff, right? Like this is all bullish stuff. But I'll just uh, add that we are following the last two bear markets quite closely. You might be right that indeed things have changed and no doubt they have. But there is a, a strong pattern um, that's fitting there not only some by similarity still. Well, quite a few, including the time frame. In other words, we are getting close to the bottom. And if this is the bottom, we mapped out both the 2014 and 2018 bear charts fairly well, including a lot of you know bear market rallies and and some. Um, so it is it is so close. So we'll see. Why don't we go to sentiment next? Because that's maybe where we can cross over a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, this is the chart you came up with uh, a couple months <laughs> During ago. During the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember. I think, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I was maybe lower on the chart than you were. Yeah, I think you were already suggesting capitulation in the summer and I was telling you, no, 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 this is denial. <laughs> like right. you've just seen still influencers even losing leverage or thinking, oh, this is the right. bottom. Every time we dropped, everybody was saying, no, this is the bottom. Right, oh, right. Oh, you know, no, 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 that was denial. Yeah. So now um, you might disagree, but I think we're somewhere between panic, capitulation and anger. Like there's 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 three categories there, just not to narrow it too much. People can make up their own mind. Um, you know, FT, there's definitely a lot of anger, which is the FTX. Uh, but uh, capitulation maybe hasn't happened yet. What do you think? 
Well, I am kind of with you in this one. I think that capitulation actually started. So okay. finally, uh, capitulation started, I think. And I don't know uh, when will it fully unravel. Um, so let's describe the, that. You can see the quote there. Capitulation. Uh -huh. The quote is, I'm getting 100% of the markets. Yeah. I can't afford to lose yeah. more. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, now all you can see now, uh, also on my uh, news aggregator app that I use, you can see that every when there is some kind of bullish news, you can see people commenting like, lol, yeah, we have to go to 10K first. And yeah. This is uh, really nice that everybody actually is selling or sold some piece of it. Very few people right. are rolling at the moment. <laughs> so right. this is a very good, actually, right. this is very bullish. Right. And again, we're trying to relate to this to your listeners that might want to, you know, have some foresight on on whether there's a it is a good time to go into crypto now or or um, to hold at least or how close we are to some sort of bottoming. Of course, we don't know and it's not financial advice, but understanding how this works is extremely useful. Um, you know, obviously some of the selling. Um, so is there anything else on this chart that you wanted to comment before I go yeah. to the next chart? Yeah, yeah. I want to say that once the capitulation fully unravels and we enter the anger phase, I think it's going to be a long phase. You have to be prepared for a long At the bottom there. kind of a... Maybe boring, maybe not so boring, uh, not so boring uh, price action because uh, like previously when I designed these areas, when I designed my 12K area a year ago in August, I was then thinking that once we revisit, once we visit 12K area, then I thought we will be stuck between 12K and 18K for a long time. And that would correspond with the anger, like very long time sideways movement. But now the wedge, it's, I think it's just also on weekly, it's so perfect. And it I already was able to, to be right twice, thanks to the wedges. So maybe it's wrong to be confident in reading the wedges now. Maybe I'm going to get wrecked by doing so. But right. I think the wedge is going to be stronger than my previously thought bunt trading between 12 to 18K. And if the wedge analysis is correct, you're saying we're going to get a strong bounce into the 28K range. But that doesn't yeah. mean we're going to hold that. No, mean we're hold no definitely no. But no, no, no. But uh, some kind of uh, disbelief um, bounce. <laughs> and that has to happen again. Um, preferably... It's not that fast, that 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 soon to the future. Not this year, uh, not uh, not January, of course. But the first half, maybe the latest, the summer, the next year, maybe the latest. Right. Uh, another another sort of historical fact, and again, it's it's very few data points, but the last three bottoms have occurred in November, December, and January. That could be a total coincidence, but. Um, Historically, okay. we've had a bottom in November, December, January. So what this shows is the 2018 bear market compared to the current one. Okay. So you can see it goes from, it's got uh, wallet sizes. The green is, is wallet sizes that are less than one Bitcoin. The black, they have between one and 100 Bitcoin. The blue is the whales, 100 Bitcoin to 10,000. And then over 10,000, I guess the mega whales. Uh, but th those and then is is the wallet adding coins or, or or losing coins, right? And then the time period you can see is from December seventeenth to December eighteenth, which was the twelve month bear market. And then we're looking then at January twenty second to to now, which is the current bear market. Both are exactly twelve months. Obviously, the the stark difference here is in this bear market. All of the wallet cohorts are adding coin, adding Bitcoin. We're talking about Bitcoin only. Whereas during the bear market in 2018, it, there was very heavy selling, except for the, the large, the 10,000 plus wallets, the pink ones, okay? And then you see the pink ones even sold off at the very bottom. Do you see how it switched? If you look at November, 2018, you had the pink see. wallets adding, they added from June 18 to November 18, it, the pink wallets were adding, 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 and even they capitulated. 
Okay. Isn't that interesting? Uh, now, no. so just so now we're seeing we have not seen capitulation from Bitcoiners at all. In fact, we've seen the opposite. They're adding. Will there be a final flip where these Bitcoiners uh, empty their wallets? The trend does not look like that's going to happen, which is bullish. Why would you uh, think that this is bullish, by the way? Because I completely don't, I, I don't agree with this, that this is bullish. This is very bearish, what I can see. This is extremely you're saying bearish. You're saying they're finally, well, the reason it's bullish is because if we had not had tons of bad news, I would say, yeah, there's bad news to come. There's going to be a blow up and then they're going to capitulate. But we've had some of the worst news in the history of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. GBTC would be worse. G well, you asked me, you asked me why I'm saying that. That that's why I'm saying it. It could be that uh, all the miners start uh, for selling again, and Bitcoin goes to eight thousand, and then these these hodlers say, "Now I'm I'm giving up." Finally, after holding for the last six years or five years, right? What could be worse than FTX? Arguably, GBTC could be. I I think they hold lots of Bitcoin. Yeah, I think. Coinbase. Yeah, Binance. Coinbase, Binance. Yeah. And also yeah. BNB is, in my mind, I have already yeah. been talking yeah. about this, is but, my mind the next possible target for SEC. And also, I remember the sentiment in 2018. I think you were in the market as well. There was okay. absolute doubt. Most of the people had come in in 2017 and thought they'd made the wrong move and we're running scared, and the chart shows that. The sentiment is completely different. The confidence level is completely different. It's, it's, thank you for that you showed me this, by the way. Thank you very much. Because I think it's very bullish because we've had, opinion, we, we've critically had a massive, but like it wasn't really, also the other thing, it wasn't a blow off top. It was a 3X upside based on leverage. So I'm reading this chart very differently than you. Um, and what I also think that this might mean is the possible actually the coupling that I might be right with my theory of the coupling from Bitcoin. I think that the sentiment for the whole cryptocurrency market cap and sentiment for Bitcoin is different. Yes, absolutely. I think it always has been. And what uh, what I can also what could this mean if, if I'm reading this correctly is that um, the decoupling will will happen sooner than I anticipated. And that what do you mean by decoupling, though? The Bitcoin dominance is going to plummet like below 20%, maybe even to 15% or so. Not only that Bitcoin is going to lose then the number one ranking, but uh, we will see the time where Bitcoin will just keep dropping in market cap and the total uh, cryptocurrency market cap will be flat or even rising. So it's just the, all the money are going to go to different projects. But but that will be with a Bitcoin price well over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I would agree that's possible. I would agree if we get to ten trillion or five trillion, I can see Bitcoin having one trillion of that, twenty percent. Maybe Ethereum has a little bit less or a little bit more. Um, but I think um, at much higher prices, at very low prices, I don't think your thesis plays out. I don't see. We, like currently we're at what 800 800 billion i don't see an 800 billion uh kind of quiet crypto world where bitcoin is failing or falling i don't see that it's a gold it's a digital gold it's a it's a it's a larger asset class uh, a 10 trillion crypto market could see bitcoin at 2 trillion ethereum at 2.5 trillion and the rest adding up to 6 trillion. I think that's possible. I don't agree with also with what you said about 150,000 Bitcoin at all. I've been thinking that Bitcoin is going to have a kind of a double top scenario, which would indeed be the most kind of bearish if Bitcoin just yeah. goes back to 60 to 70 and then dies. Yeah. But what this shows me, because if people are not capitulating even at these prices in, in Bitcoin, then what yes. this shows me that it might not even happen, that we might not even get but I think at least uh, double top then I think that Bitcoin can die way sooner. So there is not going to be yeah. I, I was never even debating even anymore that we will have 100,000 Bitcoin. I think that's not going to happen ever. It's just a dream of Bitcoin people. So in, in a very bad bear so, market, we've had tons of bad news. We're seeing the, the coinage, the coin, the, 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 the conviction, the, the, the hodlers, the core fans of the coin are adding. And a lot of these are large entities. They're 10,000 plus Bitcoin entities. They're not retail. They're not small players. They're adding coins. We will have to see something like this 
all of this below zero, these colors below so zero. You're saying that's going to reverse in the next six months. I'm not saying it's going to reverse, but if, I think it has to if the Bitcoin should bottom. And if it's not, see, if we don't see this below zero, then I think it's still just going to go lower and lower. That's what I yeah, think. Yeah, I, I disagree. Okay. So, but thank you very much that you showed me this chart. Well, it's not only that, I could give you another five okay. to 10 charts that would confirm all of this. You have to define decoupling before I can have a conversation about it. That money from Bitcoin are going to go to the different projects and that Bitcoin is no longer going to be the king that dictates whether all crypto goes up or down and everything just copies it, more or less. I think my, and, my reasons would be different though, but yeah, so, I can see that happening. And we will see it by dominance plummeting to the uh, levels never seen before. And my point here with dominance is that yet again, something shocking is happening and we have it in front of our eyes all the time. We have had a pretty significant decline in the price of crypto and Bitcoin, right? Yeah. This, this November, okay? And pretty shocking and surprising and lots of bad news. And in the past, what, what happened during those times that altcoins panic sold more than Bitcoin. Yeah, sure. Bitcoin dominance went up. Sure. Like, you see the Bitcoin dominance yeah. always went up when there was a panic. Yeah, I followed sell. it. I followed it for many years. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And what is shocking the, this year is that the dominance is on the on the yearly lows at 40% still. And right. I keep looking at this and I'm just like, am I missing something? Your argument was that because people use uh, stable coins more and go to stable coins more. That was one. I hadn't looked at the numbers, but that could be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. But also this is not at, I don't think this is true at the moment because I don't know the, the data. Yeah. Because the stable coins, the market caps, they went down and they went Let's down. From their... Proportionally tethers fallen only 72 to 65. Tethers only fallen 10%. Okay, fair enough that some to some extent it could be true, but also the stable coins were around in 2018 already as well, and the dominance was going sharply up. Mm -hmm. And also my another argument is that at the moment people are afraid of stable coins as well after uh, FTX because people are debating which stable coins are infected. No, that's by true. The stable coins, but they're but not they're selling off. But they're not selling out of them. It looks like not much. Ten percent since the since the okay peak. let's check another one let's check USDC? USDC. i'm just digging through i'm not trying to be confrontational here this is 180 days so it's down again about 10 percent, 15 percent the 20 or okay. so 15. so you might want to look at that when you're considering the dominance i don't know you're you follow that more than me but that might be one of the reasons why we're seeing that Yes, and before we wrap this up, we wanted to uh, have a word about uh, a Bitcoin exchange reserve. So, Curtis. Right. So the gray line is the price and the purple line is the aggregate total amount of Bitcoin on exchanges, what they call their exchange reserves. It says all exchanges. I don't know if it actually is all, but it's the major ones. The purple line shows that in uh, January or let's say April 2020, we hit a high of three over 3 million Bitcoin on exchanges. We've now gone down about 30, 40%. We're now down around two, two and a bit. So um, it's fallen quite a bit. And in particular, you saw at the very far right of the chart at the bottom, you had that real drop off. And that was obviously mm -hmm. fear fear people getting scared of the FDX crash mm -hmm. and pulling their coins off. We then had a bit of a recovery and now it's gone down again. So that looks like a, a temporary level. I think I think what we might find uh, more and more is that a lot of the Bitcoin was hypothecated, meaning, you know, FTX didn't have any Bitcoin. Some of these other exchanges didn't have any Bitcoin. They had promises of Bitcoin. You know, people were lending and leveraging and lending and leveraging and what we call hypothecating, which is maybe showing I have this asset or this promise, but actually I don't have the coins. In the same way they do this with gold, right? Like when you go buy a gold contract or a gold share, you're not really buying real gold. You're buying a paper version of that. And you're obviously there's a, a much larger pool of hypothecated or imaginary gold versus the real supply. I think we're seeing probably that's why we had that, that run up. And some of these bull markets are people 
trading up imaginary coins. It's not just Bitcoin. It's it's FTT token, which was not only imaginarily traded, but imaginarily printed with no fixed supply. Um, a lot of these altcoins, we don't even know how many there are, but you're anyways. So it's showing that um, there may be a supply shortage or a lack of actual coins out there vis-a-vis -vis what people were claiming they had. I don't know if this is bullish or bearish. Um, you would say that if there's a supply shock, generally speaking, all other things being equal, that, that tends to cause price appreciation. The exchanges will have to buy back the coins. For example, if they have to show their proof of reserves, like let's say I'm mm -hmm. ABC this is interesting exchange, point. right? So, I mean, they asked, uh, like Binance showed a snapshot of all their coins, but not all the other exchanges have done that. And in the future, if if I open a new exchange or I'm KuCoin or someone else, you may have people say, you have to show us your coins. How many Bitcoin do you have? And we want to see a snapshot every 30 days. But generally, such a de uh, decline in the supply uh, of the assets on exchanges means volatility, but it cuts both ways. So it's not necessarily in my from my from this perspective, at least not necessarily right. bullish, but volatile. Right. But volatile also means sharp drop and sharp backing up as well. Close. Right. Back up. Uh, but uh, you can expect that exchanges in the future will need to have some proof of reserves. We, I don't yeah, know about you. Centralized but, uh, exchanges, but I yeah. expect massive increase in popularity of the centralized exchanges. Okay. And that's also the search of the usage of platforms on which those exchanges work. They work right. on the infrastructure such as Avalanche, Ethereum, right, and others. Um, this is credit to Game of Trades. Sorry, Game of Thrones. This is DXY breakdown. So uh, we, we watched DX, uh, US dollar versus all other currencies, a basket of currencies. The major one is the euro. It's risen all year, 2020-22. Um, and it finally broke down. So it looked like it topped around 113. And it's now gone below the 107 or the 108. And you can see below, you've got the bearish crossover. I think that's the MACD and the RSI. So we've had a topping. Why is this important? Because DXY is a major inverse correlate to crypto prices and even stocks. In other words, as DXY rose, it was bearish for crypto, all, all other things being equal. Now that we've had a top, um, it may put up some su supporting bids on uh, crypto. In about two weeks, we're going to get the uh, November print. You can see October was the headline CPI at 7.7%, which was a huge improvement. What we want to see is below 7.4% for November. That's the general consensus. If, we, if we're below 7.4, we're showing that we really did top on headline inflation. Uh, food's coming down. Gas is coming down. Um, we're looking for rent and shelter to come down as well. And that's a big component of the CPI. Um, the Fed has already said they might be slowing down. They, they had they, they, There was some Fed minutes released saying um, they may be softening. So the market is praying for this to be lower than 7.4. As far as the stocks go, I just want to add at the very end that yep. uh, I've been checking I think that the 200 day moving average is a significant resistance that is not going to be uh, broken uh, uh, anytime soon. And I think that uh, the, uh, the S&P 500 is going to decline once again, because I think that lots of these also positive expectations from the CPI, from the low inflation. And uh, I, I don't think Fed is going to be is going to pivot just yet. I don't think it's going to happen in the upcoming months. I will be surprised if it does though. And uh, I think we'll see a decline. I think this is priced in the, the lower inflation print. Okay, we'll That's see. That's what I think. Yeah. So um, we'll see you again the next time. Thank you very much. And Thanks. Bye.